offerings of gratitude. It's the nature of God to give. For him, it's a natural inclination, not a provoked reaction of a outside motivator. For us, humans, it's a learned ability that very often and very much is driven by a feeling of gratitude of sort. Hmm. Can there be a selfish Christian? It's a contradiction, the lesson says. And this is a very interesting point to me. We give back because of gratitude. But God gives because he loves. It's who he is. And a Christian is someone who reflects Christ, who reflects God. So Christian and selfish don't go together. Well, we are not perfect, but it's important to understand and to be conscious that this is part of our identity. The lesson begins with a provocative thought pushing us into asking ourselves the question, where is your treasure? Because our heart is there too. We as Christians are challenged a lot to reevaluate our plans and our goals constantly due to our natural inclinations, which are houses, cars, more clothes, uh, precious material items in our possession, uh, more safety in education. These are all earthly possessions. And Jesus appeals to us to make a more balanced effort between heavenly and earthly treasures. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. My precious. Where is our precious? What is it? We all have things, interests, hobbies, weaknesses, that we love and that are precious to us. But we have embarked in a different journey with God. Our destination has changed. Our goal is different. But it has to be real. It has to be in my smile, in the morning, in everything that I do. My treasure drives my life. It's very difficult to resist the urge to give back when you have been given. There is a feeling of gratitude and there is a feeling of meaning in life that you want to pass on to somebody else. And definitely each and every one of us has been given different abilities and talents and gifts because it's not only money that we can give back to God, but anything that can further more, that is in our control and can further more the work of the gospel. It's an act of grace when we give and it's an act of grace that inspired us to give even without counting. The lesson is asking us some serious questions this week. The first one was about what is really important in our lives. Mm -hmm. Be conscious about the priorities. The second item is you have experienced grace, right? You are given a tremendous gift. You are given a new life, new chance, new perspective. Jesus is doing something so special for you. What do you do with that? We are stewards of the grace of God. Definitely our gifts and our offerings to God are a product or an outcome of our relationship with him. You do probably remember the woman that broke into Simon's party, the Pharisee Simon, and she washed, washed Jesus' feet with a precious, expensive oil. Why? Because she was touched by Jesus. She was freed from demons by Jesus. And she had this great measure of gratitude for Jesus. And I'm thinking, if we're more in touch with God, and if we're more engaged in His reality, we're going to live to much more generous giving of time and effort and talent. <laughs> Who knows then how much we might be willing to give back to God? Mm. Our best offering is not in the quantity, but in the quality. The best gift is the one that comes from the heart, the one that means something to the giver. Some people might be asking themselves the question, how much should I give? And I want to quote the lesson here in what the author says. To give out of abundance does not require much faith, but to give sacrificially for the good of others can indeed say something powerful about our hearts. Apostle Paul also gives us a good measure of understanding what the motive should be at heart when we give. In 1 Corinthians 8, 12, he says, For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable, according to what one has, 
not according to what one does not have. We compare gifts. Our society has created protocols that are so complicated for gifts that it's a burden. You have to give for this and that. You, it's not appropriate to only give so much. <laughs> Birthdays have become burdens. Weddings are nightmares. Christmas is terrible. <laughs> Relationships can be demanding. But there is no relationship when only one is the giver and the other is just the receiver, building a mentality of entitlement. The gift back may be in a simple but heartful thank you, in a smile or a tear. We can never repay God. We can never return the favor. We can never give back anything closer to what we are receiving. But what we can do is say thank you, but as we mean it as it really makes a difference in here. And show God that we are on the same page, that we are also looking forward for the time being with him, and that all these people around us, that they matter, that we love them as he loves them, and present ourselves to God and say, God, here we are. Here is what I have. Let's use it in the best way for our common family. Giving is an act of faith. It is an expression of gratitude. Any other motivation is wrong, and any lack of gratitude is a sign of a broken relationship. Next week, the lesson is entitled The Role of Stewardship. <laughs>